split second error, airborne catastrophe. Watch it again in slow motion. The sore neck is Eddie Miller of Lakewood, Colorado. He says, I'll be back. La vettura. La ruota anteriore sinistra si impunta sul terrapieno ai bordi della pista. Agisce da perno e fa compiere un salto mortale alla vettura. Ecco, in questo momento Clay Regazzoni è salvo. has occurred here in turn four. We do not know the car involved. The spun coming off of turn number three hit the inside retaining wall very hard. The car flipped over several times and it is now upside down with the driver still in it. Journalist turned driver Patrick Badar survives an incredible crash after his car explodes into pieces down the backstretch. It was one of the most terrific. I mean, you couldn't find the car. You basically couldn't see the car. It, it, it looked like a bomb had went off, and uh, it just looked... Two, and oh, we've got an axe! Viva! It's on the wall, he goes into a terrible flip, and we have a fire. The engine is ripped from the back of the car and comes tumbling across. A.J. Ford was right behind him. He was able to avoid it somehow. But Tom Spiva is in the car. He's moving around. He's trying to get out. An incredible accident on turn number 68, Tom Spiva. There is fire. Get the green right now. Doesn't look like a repeat of last year's start. No, it's a good one. And here they come. Bobby Unser going for the lead. Scotty Rutherford right alongside him. Rutherford down low, but Bobby has a terrible crash for the home stretch. There are several cars involved. We can't see the numbers, but it's been a bad crash for the start. There's the initial impact. Look at that flame, and there's a car running underneath there. You can see there passing him. Look at the car destroying itself along there. Absolutely sliding now with that oil fire now collecting. And unfortunately, very obvious in that is Danny Ongaius himself. His head was moving around at that point, but I'm sure he's unconscious by now. His leg, unfortunately, looks as if it's been rather badly broken. The flame there, you see, is certainly an oil fire. Danny Ongai is a great driver, tough man, and he's now out of the car, which is wonderful news in its own way. Danny Ongai is Hawaiian-born, celebrated his 39th birthday three days ago, driving for the Interscope Racing Team. Best he had finished here was fourth two years ago. He was seventh last year. He will be taken immediately to the track hospital here. Slightly out of the groove, and right there, he impacts the wall and starts toward the inside of the track. Spinning backwards, this may have saved his life, that he hit backwards when he hit really hard for the first time. Now, of course, he impacts the end of the pit wall. And now, sliding across to the inside of the pit wall. The newly resurfaced pit lane there. It's been indeed a very difficult week. This is Rick Mears in a monumental crash on Thursday. A malfunction in the car put Rick on his head and sliding down the racetrack. And when we look again, you'll see the cause of the crash. First Suddenly, two cars get together. And that was Cheever and Fox. The field darts to the inside, many using the warm-up lanes, which were only built here a few years ago, but probably saved many drivers here today. Stan Fox looks like he got into the wall incredibly hard. We're concerned about him, very concerned. We'll keep an eye, and we won't report anything until we actually have it confirmed. You can see as we look at this second replay how many tires and suspension pieces began to come off the cars right away and affect cars that really were not part of the original accident at all. Lynn St. James. Rookie Mark Dismore wasn't as lucky. His car exploded upon impact at pit entrance. Injuries left him sidelined for the rest of the month. He lap in the 231. So far, we're trouble. Oh, what a crash! What a terrible crash! Up and over, car flips. Up and over. That was a hard hit. 
He's fine. He doesn't really use the safety fencing. He lands on top of it. Obviously, part of the part of the car got into it to rip it open, right? Yes. It, he landed. Yeah. Oh my. I have I have never witnessed an accident like that. You know, we talked about the number three of Elio Castroneves going underneath Scott Dixon's car. Remember, it was Elio a few years ago that ended up going airborne between turns one and two and walked away from that incident as well. We see how Scott Dixon was thrown around inside the cockpit of the car. All these drivers are so physically fit. He works out here locally as we ride along on board. This is from Castro okay, watch, 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 watch. He went right under it. The car, he's going on the inside of Ryan Hunter Ray. This reminds me almost of Dan Weldon's crash here in turn three and four quite a few years ago. And the car is up into the fence, which is almost reminiscent of Kenny Brack's accident at Texas quite a few years ago, guys. Very, very lucky. You know, he was incredibly lucky that he did not go head. On his upper left five following a crash during an Indianapolis 500 practice run today, Hinchcliffe had just posted a lap speed of 221 miles per hour when an apparent failure to his front right suspension sent him slamming into the wall on corner three. After the crash, the four-time IndyCar winner was awake when taken by ambulance to local hospital. The accident comes just a day after IndyCar sanctioned reduced speeds and increased downforce after having three drivers slip their cars within the last week. IndyCar temporarily shut down the track. 